Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. We're in Maddie's bathroom again because we're babysitting her for a few days. Today is another two-in-one. I like two-in-ones because I have so much to talk about. And why not just put it all on one video? We will take a look at the new Urban Decay Born to Run palette. We'll do swatches, we'll do a demo. We'll also do some comparison swatches. I managed to also pick up a sample of the Born This Way foundation in the shade Praline because before I committed to purchasing a full bottle, I wanted to make sure that Praline worked out because I will link the video down below. I was blown away and still am currently blown away by the new Too Faced Born This Way Super Coverage Concealer, which is the only thing I have on with the Born This Way translucent powder, which I also managed to purchase some uh some blush and that was it i gotta take this off because we gotta try the foundation so hold on but yeah that's the agenda for our video friends if you want to see all that fun stuff then please keep on watching i'm really excited to yes try the born this way foundation but to talk about these shadows because i believe this is perhaps one of the best eyeshadow palettes urban decay has ever released and i'm not a hardcore makeup junkie in that i haven't been using their products for a long time the only naked palette that i love is their heat palette because their other naked palettes just look gray and charcoal on me and i tried all of them and they were all terrible on me we got fresh fresh skin for the video now all right all right all right my apologies for not having the box i will put it up next to me i just didn't realize it when i was packing everything else that i forgot to include that as well here is the front of the palette you see that there are different photographs of places around the globe on the back you have the same setup but also with the details it says here that it has a 24 month expiration shelf life that's good two years of this baby i like it bulk made in usa with U.S. and or imported ingredients from the Dominican Republic. 21 shadows in all. Each pan is 0.8 grams or 0.02 ounces. 21 shades. You got matte, metallic, satin, and shimmer. Look how beautiful she is. This has to be one of the most aesthetically pleasing arrangement of shades that I have seen in a while. When I see this, I'm like, <laughs> it calls me because of the magentas and the orange. This whole, this little quad here is just like, yes, all day. You also compare it with the blues and the greens and a nice vibrant, violet purple and then you still have your neutrals if you want to play it cool. The arrangement of shades I feel is outstanding and I haven't tried all of them. I will swatch them for you. I did a few eye looks for a the last couple of days and I am blown away by how well this formula performs. I think it far surpasses the performance of the Naked palettes. Naked Heat is good. Naked Heat I think is better than all her Naked Sisters. I brought this too if you wanted to see the comparison between the more RNG shades. It has been brought up before that the Perception palette from the Shayla Colourpop collab is like a more edited version of the Born to Run. This is a plastic compact with a magnetic closure, which usually magnetic closures are paired with a cardboard packaging. The fact that this has a magnetic closure with a plastic packaging just ensures me that this is a great product. It feels heavy, it feels solid, it feels that it will last. And the mirror! I mean, this is edge to edge. This is a big mirror. And it folds all the way back, which I think makes it for easy handling. It's ideal to, to use to apply your makeup with. The design, the packaging, all A plus for me. So let's get into these swatches. Let's do row by row. We got Breakaway, Stranded, Blaze, Weekender, Still shot. Riff. Good is gone. Woo. You're getting excited already, I can tell. Row number one. Hell ride. Baja. Accelerate. Guilt trip. Ignite. Smog. And wonderlust. Row number two. Wild heart punk 
double life, jet, drift, radio, and big sky. Row number three, swatches are bang. I should also add that this palette launched in a Born to Run collection. Three Born to Run Vice lipsticks that retail for $18 each. Three Glide On Eye Pencils that retail for $21 each. And a Born to Run Travel All Nighter Spray. Same formula, special edition packaging, $15. And this 21 Shadow Eye Palette retails $49. That's not bad. 21 shadows with several finishes. Good package. Before we roll in, if you want to see, let's do this. There'll be timestamps down below. As you know, my videos are very long. I try to be as thorough as I can. I will swatch similar shadows from Perception that I think match up with the ones in Born to Run. For instance, let's swatch Culture, Thick, and Played Out. Culture, Thick, Played out. Well, those are so close together. How did I do that? We'll now do Riff, Baja, and Punk. Or should we do Good as Gone? I think Punk takes more of a plummy hue that matches up with Played Out from Perceptions. Riff, Baja, and Punk. That was not Punk. And Punk. Ooh, I gotta do Punk again because I screwed that up. Here's Played Out. Here's Punk. Ooh, Played Out definitely has a deeper, plummier hue than Punk from Born to Run. Hmm. Good as Gone also from the Born to Run palette, I think takes on more of a cocoa hue. It definitely shows up more of a cooler brown in comparison to Punk and also Played Out from Perception. Well, I gotta get more white. Mm. Let's take a look at some of these metallic shades, yeah? Because Perception has September, which is this metallic purple. We have September 14, uh, IE, which I think matches up with another shade in Born to Run. So let's try some of those. We have September, IE, 14. All from Perception. Now we have Wild Heart, Wonderlust, and radio. IE from Perception I think takes more of a olive hue and Wonderlust is more of a forest green. 14 from Perception is like a deep sea blue and radio is I think has a little more gray in it. I'll swatch it again just so maybe we can see the color better. I think it's a cooler blue and 14 from Perception is more of a a true, true blue. The ones that we could swatch, Sassy, which is like the dual chrome turquoise to brown shade, definitely not in the Born to Run palette, but Titus, which I think matches up with Drift. We also could swatch the gold bronze shades because although not completely the same, I think they are very similar. But let's just find out, let's just do it. Titus. Titus from Perception, Drift, from Born to Run. Oh, interesting. Born to Run, I think, has a lot more of a metallic finish and comes off as a lavender silver. Beautiful color. Where I feel Titus has more of a brown base and this takes on more of a light purple one. This is it was so, so long. Four hours later. As for the gold shades, I think we could do Unbothered, which I think kind of matches up with Blaze. My apologies for not picking up the Born to Run palette as well with these comparison swatches. I'm sorry. This is Blaze here, which from the pan kind of gives me the same duochrome color story. Blaze looks more like it has the pink. So this is Unbothered from Perception, and this is Blaze from Born to Run. Blaze from Born to Run definitely has more of a pink reflect than Unbothered from Perception. And this you can get away with on your brow bone or even your inner corner. Blaze, I think will just act, you could also use it on your inner corner, but because it's pinkier in tone and you want, if you want something more neutral, 
then you will rely on a breakaway from Born to Run, and that's what that looks like. It's a lot softer, I believe, one of the satin shades in here. As for the gold shades, that's the difference I find when looking at both, that perception has TF, for instance, it's just like a pure gold. Diva, more of a bronze. Uh, Spill the Tea is like a light rose gold. Strut and Slay is more like a rose gold copper. The only ones I find that are remotely similar from the bunch are Stranded, which is this one here from Born to Run, and Diva. Okay, I'm gonna do Stranded. I will also, with Stranded, swatch TF and Diva. I don't know which finger. I'll swatch Stranded first, so we're not confused. I'm not confused. TF from Perception. Oh, that's definitely a lot more yellow gold for sure. Diva, also from Perception. Oh yeah, Stranded is like a champagne compared to Diva and TF. I mean, they're a lot more richer. More richer. I think those are the standout comparisons. If we want to take a look at Naked Heat, Naked Heat, interestingly enough, although probably similar, like for instance, Low Blow, which is the caramel transition shade in the palette, will probably pair up with Riff, which is this shade from Born to Run. But Riff, I find, is warmer than Low Blow. And then you go into the red uh, brick shade. So again, this is Riff from Born to Run. And this is Low Blow from Naked Heat. Low Blow on the low is actually a very rich color. Another reason why I love Naked Heat out of the Naked series, I think it's just better quality in pigmentation, blending, and saturation. Riff, definitely warmer than Low Blow. Riff almost looks more orange next to Low Blow, actually. Then you go into the red tones, right? Because He Devil is definitely reddish in tone. Cayenne and Fuego, these are... Uh, red, orangey, and then here with ashes, that's just like a plum shade. And I get it why they might look very similar, but I definitely think they aren't. Naked Heat is just all the warm tones where you have more splashes of color in this arrangement. Accelerate might look like it could pair up with, let's see, Dirty Talk, this shade here from Naked Heat. Now I gotta use this arm. Oh, it's so weird. Here's Accelerate, and then here is, what is this called? Dirty Talk. Accelerate, more orange, Dirty Talk, more red. I think they're both different. If you have Naked Heat and you're thinking about getting Born to Run, I will still consider getting Born to Run if you don't have other colorful shades. Now regarding Perception, Perception for sure is an edited version of Born to Run. Practically speaking, it is lighter, it is more travel friendly, you still have your warm shades and you also have your pops of color. You also have a mirror on this palette. This is $23, this is $49. When it comes down to budget, this is the best buy. I love makeup, I love collecting makeup. Did I need this? Absolutely not. Do I think it's gorgeous and the quality is outstanding and I think you have a really nice versatile arrangement of color? Absolutely. If you have this, you technically don't need this, especially if you're not eyeshadow crazy. Ask yourself this, if you have the Perception palette already and you use maybe five shades out of the 16 that are in here consistently, maybe you haven't even touched the September and the IE, 
you're probably not going to touch the purple, the greens, and the blue shades in Born to Run. Listen, we all need to have honest conversations with ourselves. I know I like to play with the olives and the blues and the purples as well as the coppers, the golds, and the rose golds. That's why I got Born to Run because I know I can use all the shades in there. I can have a warm day, a purple day, an olive day, a blue day, and be okay with it. But if you already have perception and you're not using all the shades, I wouldn't get Born to Run. Because because it's gonna be a waste. Born to Run is a nice palette and it shouldn't just be used for Riff and Baja. Are you just gonna use Riff and Baja when you buy this palette? $49 is a lot of money and it should only be worth it if you're going to use every single shadow in this palette, okay? Have a conversation with yourself, say, all right, let's make a deal. If you use I'm gonna be nice now. If you use 12 shadows out of the 16 in Perception, if you have Perception, then consider getting Born to Run. If you're using less than half, please do not get Born to Run. If you collect makeup and just want it for the palette and you could afford that, who am I to say, who am I to stop you? If you don't have either, then just get Perception. I think Perception is not as overwhelming. It definitely has the purple, the blue, and the olive, and the warms all there for you. You can create stunning, beautiful looks from just that palette. That's if you want to order from ColourPop. It, it all comes down to, personally, if you have any tips with the brand, if you love Urban Decay more, or whatever. Let me know down below what you decide to do. Since we have all that out of the way, packaging details and swatches. Before we apply the eyeshadow, Let's just get into this foundation portion. I just wanted to try it on camera shade wise to see because I'm very impatient. I will come back on here though and let you know about uh, longevity because I want to do a wear test with this foundation tomorrow. So that is the plan. Skin still feels pretty good from wiping the makeup off. Oh. Oh. Should I even be dotting this? Does this dry down quickly? From what I remember when I was working on my concealer video that this foundation is medium to full. It is also supposed to be hydrating and I think it is designed to be satin finish. I'm not too sure. Taking my Wayne Goss number one. Ooh. I might have put on a lot. It's okay. We will work it into the string. I love how this is going on. I think, yeah, I think this might be my shade, friends. And several of you have actually suggested that I look into praline. So I love how we're just all on the same page. Yes, community. And that's why I take full advantage of the sample program at Sephora. I'm that annoying person that says, can I have a sample of this and this and this and this? Because I want to try it. I don't want to go through buying a full size product and having to return it. One of my viewers did call me out on the Fenty launch that I ordered a bunch of stuff because I knew I could return it if I didn't like it and she was like you know you're taking advantage of their system and it's not cool for you to buy all this stuff well knowing even though Sephora will take it back that maybe you could have waited chilled a little bit maybe just buy one foundation or even just try it on in the store before buying all this makeup and having to return all this makeup because it's a total waste I'm not a big beauty influencer I don't get PR a lot for makeup or at all I received uh, lipsticks from Mented Cosmetics, which I want to swatch and show you guys on here. I received some hair stuff, some skincare stuff, but the big brands thing, no one's sending anything to me. I've been buying everything and it's getting expensive. But I also know to stay relevant, the new thing or the, the more most popular thing to do is to review new product. And with new product always constantly being launched every single day. I mean, I'm gonna run out of money. I need to eat. <laughs> My apologies for that tangent, but that's where I'm at right now. And I hope you understand. Back to this foundation. This was just for the color match. I think 
I believe this is a good color match. Let's apply the Born This Way Super Coverage Concealer in Sand. I also want to see how Honey looks on Praline. I'm gonna do a full review on this. That's, that's gonna be a separate video because again, I want to make sure that I know what this foundation does after a couple of hours and all that good stuff. <gasps> oh, and I gotta do these eyebrows too. Oh my goodness. I just realized I left the AC on. If you hear it in the background, I am, oh, sorry. Sand is looking good. This is honey. Spot treating the blemishes for a little more coverage, but I don't even, I don't even need to use a lot because the foundation covered up those spots pretty well. To punch honey in. Honey does look cooler on praline because praline is a golden undertone, whereas honey is a neutral one. I think they will mesh well, but only time will tell. Taking my bigger G2 from Morphe to better blend those two together. Not bad. Let's see what this is gonna do. This is translucent. I also picked up a sample of the medium. Yes, I did. I think she will be able to do it, but she did it. She took the receipt paper, poured some in, and we got we got some medium because I wanted I wanted to see how it looked on my face. I had a little heart sifter, closed lid sifter, but I'm still going to pour some in. The lid it kind of has like a yellowish tint to it. It's very hard to see in front of this light, but that that I feel good about that. Take my big 520 brush from Luxie, tap that in, and just punch and just get it all over. I wanted to use the translucent on the center of my face because I want to keep that brightness. And now I think I'm just gonna use the same lid. This is the color of medium. It actually looks quite uh yellow oh oh my god oh my god i poured too much it's a disaster oh my god here is the color of the medium shade quite yellow i'm curious to see oh man i think that actually added a bit of a tint i don't know if hmm yeah that added a bit of a tint i don't Think okay, I'm happy that I got a sample of this because this leads me to believe that translucent might be enough, especially if I'm gonna add bronzer, which is what I rely on to create that warmth. I know it's translucent and the tint shouldn't be aggressive, but ooh. Because I just wanted to see the shade, I will come back on here to do more close-ups of the foundation and whatnot. Maybe I'll keep this on for the rest of the day. It's already late, but I will just Remember what I run stick in the batter out of the lid so it doesn't mix with the translucent. All right, friends, I'm gonna go off camera, put on these eyebrows, and we're gonna do some eyeshadow. I'll be right back. And finally, we've arrived. Our do glows. Hi. Oh, look at those lines. Oh god. Oh, and I forgot. Hold on, I forgot to put my eyebrows on. <laughs> Okay, we're back. I set my lid with the Super Coverage Born This Way in sand and also pat it down with the Born This Way Ethereal Powder. Let's get into it! What should we do first? What are you dying to see? Hmm. I already tried all the mattes and I can report that they are all immaculate. I think though, if you really want to get poppin', let's do Still Shots, Baja, and Hellride. How does that sound? Taking my very dirty Wayne Gauze 16 with Still Shot. You got some kickback in the pan. This one does feel drier to touch when swatching, but I think it blends pretty well. It's a really nice shade and I like to build this up. I go in about three, four times, but it doesn't end up looking patchy. It just kicks up the saturation and I think it looks really nice on the crease. And I'm using very light pressure and relying on the point of this brush to work the color into the crease. Now with Baja, same brush, 
gonna work it a little lower. Tell you, man, these shells are really nice. They're just so soft and easy to use. Like, look at that. Look how seamless that looks. Here's how we're looking with Baja and Still Shots. I know you're dying to see Hellride going in with Smith 235. Hellride is a little drier and it has a lot more kickback in the pan, but tap off and you're good. We're gonna go in now on the outer corners. I will definitely come back on here and do another look with the blue shade because this will not be my ideal setup if I were to use the blue shades as my accent colors. It's all good though because you know I love to come back on here and revisit palettes because especially if they're 21 shades. I just love how this blends. I think it's a really nice matte and there's no fallout on my face. And there are just like no harsh lines. Zero harsh lines. This is the shade that I was blown away by, Punk, which is like that deep plummy brown shade. I'm taking that with my Morphe M514 brush and we're gonna go in with Punk. This blends so quickly and so well. I used it twice and you get that depth right away. Keeping it low because I want to build it slowly. But see, like, look, it's already there. It's already there. And I love Hellride. I love how it's not true purple, but more of like a magenta. Isn't that gorgeous? You're not in frame. Come on now. I now will use my small Luxie 231 because I want to start building up the lower lash line. With that, I'm going in with Baja first. Hellride. I'm gonna just do outer and inner for the lash line. I need to get really smoky with this, so get ready. Then I take a bigger fluffy brush. This is a Sigma E25, but now with still shots, the more peachy salmon shade, I'm gonna run that under both those shadows and just take it low. My Wayne Goss number five, Punk, just to the outer edge of my lower lash line because I don't want it to get too crazy here and I feel if I use a smaller brush to connect top to bottom that I'll have a little more control. Oh maybe I'm doing uh, three quarters okay. Taking my Luxie just to finesse this a little more. This is my trouble eye as if you don't know you know now. This is a number three it has a similar shape to the 16 and I'm rubbing off any product on it because now I want to go in with my loose powder to help smooth out the edges. I could use uh, an eyeshadow but I don't want to add more color to it. I just want to kind of help smooth out the ends. I'm brushing in because I don't want it to go further out. So hopefully those circular motions will kind of help clean it up. Because look how this just came out beautifully up that point, but this side is like, oh, what's happening? I'm gonna take Breakaway, which is the satin shade here with my MAC small, or I should say, it's not very small, it's a big shader. And maybe I'm gonna pop that right, okay, that fixed it a little bit. The satin shade, just to clean up that point and I think we got it. We do this side as well since you know we're on that step. You know do a little of that. See what happens. Come on now. How about what should we put on the lid? I have a feeling you want to see Wild Heart maybe go trip. I really want to go into drip. I think that is a beautiful shade. I have not used it yet. From the feel of the swatch, it was very creamy, and I want to see now with my Smith to 53 how it goes on dry. Oh my god. That is a shade. I cannot, will not 
Oh, and it's not even wet. I'm not even gonna bother. Sometimes I find if I pack on a lot of shadow and go back in with a wet brush, it actually turns out more texture than what I would like. So I committed to the dry application. I'm gonna leave it at that because I don't want things to get crazy. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit, just a little bit. I will we'll go into my finger to get close to the lash line. Oh my God, you guys, what is happening? Love. I do wanna take Guilt Trip, that's the purple shade, to the inner portion of my lid because I think that will combine really nicely with drift. Oh, that was a good idea. A little bit of fallout from drift because on that was my bad. I really loaded the brush a lot. I am going to wet Guilt Trip because I feel it's not sticking because I'm just blending it away. So let's pat that on. Oh, that, that was a good idea. Okay, noted, guilt trip is sublime when wet. You're nasty. Wetting guilt trip makes it look more ultraviolet. So keep that in mind and I think you should take that step. Oh, that's gorgeous. Just to try some of these uh, coppery bronze shades, I think I wanna do, I wanna do night. I'm gonna do night, but to the inner, Third. Taking, hmm, I'll use, I'm gonna do this brush. I'm gonna use my nameless small shader with Ignite. And just drag it across right here. Oh, things are getting smoky. I'm gonna brush, drift off, and good that my brush still had powder on there, so it made that task fairly easy. Ooh, I love how this is turning out. Pinky, stranded. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now, I didn't bring my falsies. I'm also a little lazy right now and I think I just want to do eyeshadow. <laughs> you already have eyeshadow on. I, think I just want to do mascara. So if that's cool with you guys, I'm going to be right back, apply the rest of my makeup, and we'll take it from there. Done! I think my eyes turned out very well and it was a pleasure to use. I will pop up a picture of the shade Wild Heart. This, uh, I think it's like more of a satin uh, shade rather than a metallic one. I put it on my lid and I loved how it looked. It was very standout, ultraviolet. Uh, people noticed it. Good color. Listen, man, like I said, if you're not going to use these colors, don't get the palette. If you love color, you love eyeshadow, you're good at the blend, you are you love the process, I think Born to Run is probably one of the best eye palettes that Urban Decay has ever released. This is top notch. Everything from the concept to the packaging to the quality of the shadows and they last well. I think I used this palette the day before. I wore it for maybe five, six hours and the pigmentation stayed on my lids. It didn't fade terribly. It stayed on. The mattes still looked rich. They didn't disappear. I am very happy with my $49 purchase. I couldn't have asked for a better eyeshadow palette just in terms of not only the quality, but the arrangement of shades. And these shades are not new, especially regarding the mattes. Everyone's gonna have the matte tan and the, the orange and the dark brown. But why shouldn't you? I did get the Atlantis palette. That's coming soon. You just wait for that one. But in terms of every day and just having the option to go uh, warm or to go cool, and I understand the only cool matte here is Weekender, but I think that will set up all these bluish metallics very well. This might be just a one shade eye, right? You'll apply radio and and or Big Sky Wonderlust all over the lid and call it a day. I love doing eye looks like that, just making them all metallic like I did with the Fenty Beauty palette, the Moroccan Spice palette using that blue. I think it's a great route to go, but if you wanna go matte crazy, you can. You can make really deepen this up. I think Jet is a satin shade and if you wanted to work that in with any of the brown shades, then you can bump up the intensity 
with that. I will definitely come back on here to show you more eye looks as I usually like to do with eye palettes. Let me know down below if you picked up Born to Run, if you're planning on it, what you're thinking about. If you have any palette comparison questions, let me know down below as well. I love to help people figure out what the best route is in terms of purchasing something or not. I say, listen, it all depends on your lifestyle and scenario. If you don't have a lot of time to spend on makeup, on eye looks, then if you just want to have it to have it, then that is totally up to you. I like to spend time on my makeup. I love the process. I love eyeshadow. I think I'm pretty decent at blending and combining shades and creating eye looks. And that's why I have still am having a blast using this palette. I also love my Perception palette and I definitely will juggle between the two. Yes, Perception I think is easier to travel with, but this isn't bad to travel with either. It's just slightly heavier and you know, you have the bigger mirror and you have more options here in this palette. So you gotta break down the pros and cons concerning your lifestyle, uh, your needs and, and how you do your makeup. My final answer out of this review video is yes it is totally worth it if you will use the majority of the shadows and will spend time on your eye makeup even if you want to get it and you use two shades the two shades that you'll use will be outstanding and maybe it will inspire you to break out of your comfort zone and use the blue shades or the green shade or or the ultraviolet purple shade why not you never know I cannot wait to keep using this palette as for the foundation, I'll get back to you on that. Because as I said, I like to figure things out first, feel it out, experience it. I can tell you right now, right off the bat, that I used way too much. And it's starting to settle into my smile lines here. See how you still see the crease? A little goes a long way. I probably could have used a lot less. But it's all good because I learned my lesson. I'm going to try this foundation on again tomorrow. Make note of all my observations and report back to you guys. And that, my friends, is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And until then, I'll see you on here again with another video. To chat, get ready with me, demo, or review. Take care, and I'll see you again soon.